Hello everyone, I am back. Thank you all so much for your well wishes over the last week. It meant a lot. You're all sweet and wonderful and I love you. And I'm really excited to get back to making videos again. I'm afraid I might be a bit out of practice, but oh well, I'll edit it out so you'll have no idea. I thought it was about time for another Hitchcock review, so today we're going to be looking at 1954's Dial M for Murder, starring Ray Milland and Grace Kelly. When former tennis star Tony Wendis discovers his wife Margot is in love with another man, a mystery writer played by Robert Cummings, Tony decides not to get a divorce, but to hire a man to kill her. But when the attempted murder goes awry and the man ends up dead himself, it's time for a change of plan. Supposedly Hitchcock was forced to make this movie by the studio and wasn't interested in its production, which is amazing because it's a great movie. The 1950s love affair with 3D was in full swing when this was made, thanks to the success of films like House of Wax the year before, so this was shot in 3D at Warner Brothers' request. I can't say for sure because I've never seen it in 3D, but I'm not sure if that gimmick adds a whole lot to the movie. It's just not the kind of thing that begs for 3D treatment. There aren't things shooting at the camera, there aren't any high-speed chases or anything, so it seems to me like kind of an odd choice. I am curious, though, what that famous murder scene was like in 3D. This is the movie's trademark scene, and the best scene in the film, I believe, the key moment when Tony calls his wife and listens as she's being strangled. It's classic Hitchcock, expertly choreographed and filmed and pushing the limits for violence in 1954, with the strangling, the struggling, the stabbing, the image of the scissors plunging deeper into the killer's back when he falls. There's only one thing that bothers me about the scene, and that is that I can't believe how long Margot stands there by the desk holding the phone to her ear and saying hello, waiting for an answer. Hello? 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 <laughs> Wouldn't most people hang up after just a few seconds of that, say hello once or twice, and then when no one answers, hang up? Now I realize that it's 1954, and there were a lot more difficulties with dropped calls and missed connections and having to deal with the operator and everything. It's a much different time than what we have now. I'm willing to forgive it because it just builds the suspense up so much more. It's a much better scene because of it. But still, <laughs> I would just hang up and go back to bed. And I think, I hope, in real life someone would know not to wait until her husband comes home before calling the police and not to let him tamper with the scene of the crime. None of this, don't worry dear, I'll take care of it for you, you go on back to bed stuff. No, if someone dies in your house, don't handle it that way. You call the police. This is a PSA now. For a long time, this was the only movie I knew Ray Milland from, though I also knew he was The Man with the X-Ray Eyes, a movie that I'd seen a few minutes of when I was really little, and I refused to watch it because I was terrified of it. So I spent a long time thinking that he always played the villain. But really, in the 30s and 40s, he frequently played much lighter, romantic, or comedic roles. In those movies, he's a very likable guy, even a little goofy. But not here. <laughs> Tony Wendis is an excellent Hitchcock villain, an urbane and sociable exterior hiding his true smug, duplicitous, calculating nature. He's an opportunist, turning every change of plan to his advantage, and he's cunningly figured out a way to go on living comfortably on his wife's money without having to live with her. Everything he does is smooth and methodical, but not without a touch of the most twisted kind of malice. I really enjoy the psychology of Tony's conversation with Captain Swan, the man he lures into killing his wife for him. The scene starts out so benign and chatty, and then all of a sudden Tony's casually making his pitch. It's really interesting in a bizarre way. How does one go about making that kind of suggestion to an old school acquaintance you haven't seen in 20 years? Hey, we haven't seen each other in ages. How's it going? Yeah, I was thinking of killing my wife, but then I actually started spying on you, and I realized you're such a scumbag that I might as well get you to do the job for me. I'll pay you, of course. Dial M for Murder is a movie that requires you to keep your brain turned on. There's a lot of dialogue, and some of it is kind of hard to keep up with. Intentionally so, like when Tony's setting his trap for Swan, or trying to pull the wool over someone's eyes. 
And at one point, it kind of turns into a game of memory, where the audience is trying to keep track of the whereabouts of two, or is it three, latch keys. One highlight of the movie is the costuming. You've got to pay attention to Grace Kelly's wardrobe in this one. Well, you should pay attention to the costumes in just about every Hitchcock movie, especially when Grace Kelly is wearing them. But this red dress with the matching heels and lace shrug is a stunner. This was Kelly's first film with Alfred Hitchcock, and she does a really good job transforming from the vivacious and unfaithful wife to the broken woman on the verge of a nervous breakdown, the draining of color and vibrancy in her clothing, hair, and makeup reflecting her mental and emotional distress. But I think my favorite thing about this movie is John Williams. That's character actor John Williams, not the composer, playing Chief Inspector Hubbard, a role he'd won the Tony Award for during the stage play's original run on Broadway. Hubbard is the type of detective who knows more than he's letting on, who finds it advantageous to pretend to be dumber than he is in order to get information. I like that dim-witted or absent-minded policeman routine, which reminds me of Superintendent Battle, my favorite Agatha Christie detective. But Williams also brings out most of the humor in the script. I love his annoyed reaction when Robert Cummings' mystery writer wants to play wannabe detective. Williams has this dry, tired delivery that's just great. It really makes the movie for me. I definitely recommend checking this one out if you haven't seen it already. It's a really good movie. I don't know if I'd put it on my top 10 Hitchcock list, but that's just because... There are so many good movies to choose from, and I'm not sure which one I would take off that list to make room for this one, so that's the problem you always run into with Hitchcock movies. They're very hard to rank because there are so many good ones. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this review, and I will see you again in a few days. I'll sound even better then, hopefully, than I do now, and I hope you'll be- I forget what I was gonna say. Oh well. <laughs> Thanks for watching!